Hello everyone, I am Legend here, bringing you guys the best map optimization slash map building guide in Wild Hearts. We continue the series with Natsukodachi Isle map. Before starting the map guide, I would love to give a huge shout out and special thanks to my friend Valgrim. Without him, this video would not have been possible. He has over 350 hours in the game and the best map layouts I have seen so far and we thought of making the video on the same and giving you guys some ideas on how to build your map. Remember, this is just an idea on how to build your map. You don't have to build it the same way. Whatever layout works for you and you're happy about it, that's all matters. This is by far my favorite map in the game and the map which I've spent the most time on the game for my cladding armor etc. I'll be showing you all the traversal points along with the secret passage route at the end. You start at seashore camp when you reach this area for the first time and this camp offers more room compared to the others. So I've decided to place all my ore and food shrines in this area. Also coming to the pattern, we follow the same pattern of placing 4 camps on each corner of the map and one in the middle. Starting of the traversal, we go to the back of the camp and have placed a couple of flying vines which will take us to spine or venom glider spawns. If you are searching for other kimono, I have placed another flying vine which will take us directly to either the Ripclaw or Dreadclaw or our new favourite wolf, the Grimstalker, which usually spawns in this area a lot. This is where it usually lurks around and this saves you a lot of time running on foot to get to this area. Now let's travel back and let me show you where other flying vines lead you to. This flying vine takes you to the usual spawns of Grid Dog, Pearl Beak and sometimes the Grimstalker and mainly cuts down the time travelling on foot. If you are searching for other kimono, take this flying vine which I have placed here which will take you to the broken boat area where most of the time the chicken spawns. You will sometimes fight a pearl beak in this area too. Now let me travel to the other camp and show you the traversal points there. In this camp, I have placed flying vines on each side which gives us access to the kimono we spoke before and also the deeply volatile chicken, the favorite craze comb. I have also placed couple of thread shrines which will help you in fighting the DV chicken. When you are a cannon user, you can charge your ultimate on the small kimono which spawn near the beach and go fight the DV chicken with the ultimate ready. There you 
you go. Now you have the ultimate ready and you can face the DV chicken with one ultimate ready at all times. Now let's travel to the other camp, which gives you access to a few other kimono. <coughs> One of the flying men gives you access to the broken shipyard, where you fight bunch of kimono, which have their usual spawns in this area, namely the ember plume, Grimstalker and sometimes a grid dog. You can also use the same flying vine as an escape from the fight and get some healing water quickly. Another flying van gives you access to the runes area where you fight bunch of kimono again or you can drop down in the middle and also fight the kimono which spawn there in the bottom. Now let's travel to the other camp. This camp is placed here for a couple of reasons, one being a normal slash mighty version of lava bat usually spawns during few of the hunts or it runs away during the fight to the bottom part of the rooms. So placing the camp there gives you easy access to it. Second reason is the hellfire lahar bat aka the dv monkey spawns in this area and I have placed couple of threat shrines which will give me some edge during the hunts. The DV monkey always spawns in this area and it's a hell of a fight. When you fight a normal lava back, it tends to run away during few of the hunts and go to the top. So instead of just running behind it, I have placed a flying vine which will take us directly to the top and saves us some time. This is where it will end up when running away. <coughs> and for the last camp on the top right, which will give us access to some kimono spawns like Pearl Beak or Ember Blue, which either spawn or fly away during the fight. Good example is the ember plume waiting for yeah. us there. As mentioned at the start of the video, we now go to the secret passage area which will give us access to the ember plume area we have been before. You can access it via rogue wave reef, the camp which we used to go to the favorite craze comb.
there you go this is another way of accessing this area all right so this is how you build nat sukurachi isle again this is just me showing you how i built it and give you some layout ideas you don't have to build it this way and if you have more better layouts please do share them in the comment section below i have received a feedback on my previous video for harugasumi way where you can place the tent near sakura blossom tree which helps in farming the meats from small kimono much more faster and efficient leave a like if you found this video helpful and please subscribe for more wild hearts content i am trying to hit 1000 subs by end of the year so subscribing really helps me a ton see you guys in the next one and happy hunting